So you want to learn more about lemurs and their double tongues? Well, you've come to the right place. We're here in the collection spaces of the Natural History Museum to find out more about the wonderful world of lemurs, Madagascar's most iconic primate. And I'm joined by museum scientist Hannah Teague. Hello. And we're going to try and get to the bottom of yeah, lemur biology, life history, but most importantly, why they have two tongues. And if you haven't already caught our video on this, why don't you move it, move it into the link in the description to watch that now. But first, let's get started and start talking all about lemurs. Before we talk tongues, I just want to ask you a bit more about what lemurs are. I feel like they look like monkeys, they sound like monkeys, they move quite a lot like monkeys, but someone told me they might not be monkeys. What's a lemur? So, lemurs aren't actually monkeys. Okay. <laughs> they are a type of primate, but not the monkey kind of primate. Um, lemurs are a type of primate that are endemic to Madagascar which means that they aren't found in the wild anywhere else in the world. So there are over 100 species of lemur, um, ranging in size and shape. So- Got some of them here? Yeah, Our we special do. special guests. So we've got the Indri, which is the largest species of lemur in the world that we currently have. Um, they get to about 70 centimeters in body length and can weigh up to about nine kilos. Um, probably the most notable lemur is the ring-tailed lemur, which we have a skull of here. Iconic. Um, yeah, iconic for their striped tail. They're about a moderate sized lemur, getting up to about 45 centimeters, but their tail can be 60, which is much longer than their wow. body. You also get really small lemurs as well. So we've got a tiny species over here known as the mouse lemur. Um, so cute. They are so sweet, aren't they? They can be up to 10 centimeters long and weigh only about 30 grams. Wow, a hugely diverse group that I thought was just, just King Julian, really. So there's so much more than just King Julian. Mm -hmm. In terms of this question that we've been talking about before and um, yeah, diving into with, the, with these specimens, two tongues, what's going on with lemurs? Do yeah. they all have two tongues? Why do they have two tongues? Tell me more. So most species of lemur do have two tongues. Um, it's hidden underneath their main tongue and it's called the sublingua and it's used to help the lemurs in grooming. So most lemurs have something called a tooth comb, which is kind of a, a set of long comb-like teeth that they use to help brush their fur and remove parasites. So the sublingua, um, their second tongue, works in conjunction with that to kind of clean out anything lodged in these tooth combs, kind of like a toothpick. Cool. Can we see that tooth comb? Of these? course, yeah. So at the front of these jaw bones, you've got the, the tooth comb, mm -hmm. right at the end there. So this was the ring-tailed, this definitely has one. Yes, definitely. This one, yes. Yeah, the injury's got one. Do you know about that one? Does it have a tiny, tiny It tooth? has a very teeny one right at the end there. Wow, that's cool. I mean, who knew that they've got a kind of built-in bit of floss? Yeah. <laughs> or a tooth bit going around with them. Very useful. Incredibly useful. Kind of wish I had one. Yeah, and it brings a new, phrase, new meaning to the phrase tongue twister. I guess, those two tongues. Sorry, terrible joke. <laughs> um, so thanks for explaining that. This idea of sublingua and using it for grooming, you said, mm -hmm. and in that kind of dynamic of lemur life, is grooming very important for lemurs? Um, why do they do it? And yeah, what does it mean in lemur society? Yeah, so grooming is really important um, for lemurs. For example, ring-tailed lemurs, they live in troops. There can be up to 30 individuals in a troop and they participate in something called mutual grooming. It's important for various reasons, so hygiene and also strengthening bonds within the group. It's been found that as well as just maintaining their coats, grooming can actually help reduce stress in individuals in the troop. Oh. I'm definitely calmer after a haircut, to be <laughs> fair. Um, cool, that's really interesting. In terms of that grooming and the dynamic between lemurs, do the kind of most well-kept, I guess, and most highly groomed individuals, are they, is there some sort of pecking order? Mm. Are they the most popular? Well, yeah, it's, it's sort of hard to talk about popularity mm. in, the, in the group. Fair. But <laughs> I'm so vain. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that sort of the most dominant individuals, the ones at the top of the pecking order, they get certain perks. So they'll get sort of the first choice of food, but also they'll get groomed more. So... Being scruffy 
<laughs> in a Lima troop might might hinder you slightly. Maybe a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Just a quick one. If you're watching this and you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure you, again, move it, move it down to the button below to subscribe for more Natural History Museum content. Um, so yeah, we're just talking about scruffy lemurs and um, yeah, that kind of hierarchy within Lima society. Mm. Grooming and this personal hygiene, and as we know, singing can be quite important for lemurs. How else are they adapted to their environments, which I imagine are quite unique mm. in Madagascar? Yeah, so for example, the ring-tailed lemur has a lot of adaptations. They live in a variety of environments on the island, um, from sort of shrubland to trees, but they do most of their moving around um, arboreally, mm -hmm. so they need to be really good climbers. So they've got really leathery palms with deep dermal ridges, which give them really great grip on branches. Um, and also their tail, their really notable tail, isn't just for looks. Um, it's longer than the body of the ring-tailed lemur and it kind of acts as a counterweight, helping them move gracefully throughout the trees. Um, nice. And it also is useful in communication between troop members. Um, they've got different tail signals to alert other members of the group to potential predators. So it's a really important um, adaptation for keeping the whole troop safe. Cool. Wow. I wish I had a tail of my own to communicate with. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fascinating. There's yeah, so much more to lemurs than, than I first thought. But they're not the only animals that have amazing tongues in, in the wild. Can you tell me a bit more about some other kind of crazy tongue adaptations? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as you say, lemurs aren't the only ones with some crazy tongues out there. For example, the pangolin has one of the largest tongues in the animal kingdom. Really? It can grow up to more than its head and body length combined. So absolutely huge. Wow. Um, and that's a really great adaptation for them because they feed on um, termites and ants, which live in sort of mounds with lots of tunnels. So having a really long tongue is incredibly useful for getting in all those tunnels and eating their favorite food. Chameleons have really um, unique tongues as well. They are incredibly fast. Um, if they were a car, for example, they could go from zero to 60 miles per hour in one hundredth of a second. That's how fast chameleon tongues can be. Wow. Yeah, it is so impressive. There's also um, woodpeckers. They protect their brains, one of their many strategies for protecting their brains when they're sort of drilling into a tree is by wrapping their tongue around their brain so it kind of acts as a, as a cushion for it, as wow. a shock absorber. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for telling us all about lemurs, their amazing tongues, and also beyond in the animal kingdom. It's been truly fascinating. So, well, there you have it. And if you've got a favorite tongue adaptation from the animal kingdom, let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this lemur lowdown as much as I did, please give us a like and subscribe for more natural history content.